You've heard the saying, and this March is no doubt coming in like a lion. A multi-day severe weather outbreak looks to take aim on the south and southeast. On the cold side of that system, snow and ice is to be expected. This is the same storm that is currently blasting the west coast with rain and more heavy mountain snow. We're going to break down this coast-to-coast -coast system starting on the west coast. Post in the comments what the weather is currently doing where you're watching from. This massive upper low will ride down the west coast of the U.S., bringing rain and mountain snow to Washington, Oregon, and California through Wednesday up to three feet of additional snow is likely in wait. There's another system right on the heels of this one that's going to blast on through into the weekend. This low then ejects into the plains and will become the focal point for yet another major storm to develop from the deep south all the way into the Great Lakes and eventually the northeast. Now it's time for another weather breakdown. We're looking at the SPC outlook for Thursday. We can't catch a break for severe weather this year in the deep south. That orange color from Durant, Oklahoma into Dallas, Waco, north of Bryan, Alexandria through Jackson into Tupelo, including Little Rock and Texarkana. That is an enhanced risk already three days out. A likely upgrade is going to be on the horizon from the Storm Prediction Center. As we get closer to the event, there are still some timing issues as to when this begins to materialize. All right, time to roll up our sleeves and get our hands dirty. Here is our upper level system diving into Mexico. We're looking at the 500 millibar wind speed. That's about 15 to 20,000 feet above your head. Here is the wind energy moving out of Mexico and screaming right into the western portion of Texas. This is as of Thursday at about noon central time. Watch what happens as we move deeper into the evening. This is 6 o'clock, and then this is early Friday morning. We get that negatively tilted trough that helps to enhance the severe weather situation going on. The wind speed really increasing into eastern Texas now, and we get that pulling of the part of the winds with height moving more out of the southwest across parts of the deep south and then just flying right on through the east into missouri that helps to really enhance that severe weather threat it gives you that extra little bit of lift now there is some uncertainty with this this certainly looks like there is a very good potential for a severe weather outbreak in parts of east texas and then through the deep south but there are going to be some timing issues here we're looking at the surface dew point now and the darker the orange represents where we have the rich humidity for these storms to kind of feed off of. Here is our warm sector as of Thursday afternoon, extending back to north of Little Rock into Mississippi, Alabama, into Louisiana. Remember I just showed you last frame a couple minutes ago, that upper level low. All of the dynamics still are going to be hanging back into West Texas, so they're not going to line up completely with the warm sector during the heating of the day so there's going to be some kind of question as to what we can pop during the day with most of the forcing being back into west texas and into new mexico into mexico and then the front itself being draped across parts of northern arkansas so that is going to be a question in and of itself i want to show you the future radar going forward here this is going to be thursday afternoon at about 7 o'clock, so really getting into the evening, 7 o'clock Eastern, 6 o'clock Central, and you see some of these darker stripes here indicating where we could have a few of those stronger thunderstorms ongoing already. But as we get deeper into the evening and into early Friday morning, this is going to be midnight. Here is our surface low. Here is where our front is going to be draped, pretty much right over Memphis. Cold front then going to be extending back in this direction, and then it's right along the front and then right on through here where you see that green, the model spitting out where we're going to have rain and thunderstorms, that is going to be our best shot for severe weather. But again, there's some uncertainties as to when we get those upper level dynamics to meet up with the instability. If the two kind of co-locate, it's going to get really, really ugly out here. But it looks like there's going to be enough for maybe even a few early day supercells. We're going to go back in time now. This is going to be thursday at about lunchtime we might be able to get some storms popping in the warm sector if we do that these no doubt will be able to produce some very strong tornadoes as there is a ton of wind shear in our atmosphere this system is then going to slide to the east on friday here is that day four outlook from the storm prediction center you see it there again working from nashville 
all the way into Charlotte, back down toward Atlanta, and then into the Georgia-Florida line, also into extreme southern Mississippi and into Alabama. So again, going to watch that portion extremely closely as we move from Thursday into Friday. Now, there's going to be a cold side of this as well. Watch this thing really start to ramp up. This is going to be Friday morning, so we likely have a continuation of that severe weather threat. Here we go with our center of low pressure moving through northwest Arkansas. Our warm front going to be kind of about right there by this point. Cold front extending here on the cold side of this system. Look at all the snow trying to develop. And as we move further into the afternoon, look at that heavy stripe of snow this is going to be friday evening now six o'clock central seven o'clock eastern we have a band of really heavy snow from about chicago to north of detroit maybe even getting back into toronto and then extending into the northeast right about in there then we have that severe weather threat moving through there was a time at least there was a lot of Hype on social media in and around the D.C. Northern Virginia area. The Euro went crazy with more than a foot of snow in that area. That is since been washed away. That's why I always preach again on this channel to throw those crazy model numbers out until you start to get a little closer and until you know what the upper level pattern is doing. Those model runs had the low kind of going out in this direction. Right now, the low is going to be moving up closer towards the Great Lakes, which is not a good situation for snow in the Delmarva Peninsula, into D.C., and in Northern Virginia. This, as we move into Saturday, then starts to blast the Northeast again, especially the interior Northeast with some snow, although something to watch as we get closer into the event again. This is Saturday afternoon. Here is our big area of low pressure, a, div a new one, very similar to what is going on or what was going on on Tuesday. Our low that kind of was driving through the Great Lakes and up into southern Canada, transferring its energy to a new coastal low. So we are going to be watching that closely. In terms of how much snow could fall, still too early for specifics because we'd be looking really from Thursday in the Plains to Great Lakes through about Saturday into the Northeast. But I want to show you the probability for a plowable snow, which is what I would consider six inches or more, which really starts to get that winter storm warning going from the National Weather Service. And you see the highest probabilities for that to happen at this time in extreme northern Missouri, north of Chicago, and then as we get back towards the thumb of Michigan, into northern Michigan, and then towards Milwaukee, south of Green Bay. I think Detroit, we're probably going to miss out on that one, but we are used to that all too well on missing out on uh, some of the crazy snow events recently most of that has been to your north and it's been kind of a lame weather winter other than the ice and of course nobody wants the ice we had a lot of damage as we all know if you live in southern michigan from that ice storm thank you guys so much for tuning in if you found this helpful if you enjoyed the content and if you just love tracking the weather and talking about the weather you've come to the right place i'm meteorologist jonathan kegas and we'd love to have you on board please hit that thumbs up button if you like this video and please consider subscribing, and we will catch you next time.